right, so we'll go ahead and get started for today. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the last week in October. Somehow that happened really quick. So anyway, we're going to start today and we're actually shifting gears out of Adobe Illustrator and we're going to move into um, the first non Adobe product of the semester. We're going to actually do a little bit of work in AutoCAD. And um, this is kind of an interesting one because there's no way for me to be able to teach you all you need to know in AutoCAD in a you know three week little module. But at the same time, we, we went around and around. Uh, there's actually an advisory committee meeting that meets um, once at the end of each semester. And they uh, it's composed of faculty people. And then it's composed of outside practicing architects. And we talk about what's you know what are current trends, what should be taught in class, what's aligning with what they want, et cetera. And um, this was about, hmm, I don't know, probably 10 years ago now. Um, there was no AutoCAD that was taught in this class. And um, as a result, people that were in 121 and you know moving up the chain were feeling like they were missing kind of a vital piece of the puzzle. Some of that is related to being able to produce laser cut files. Other parts are just kind of general AutoCAD knowledge. So we decided at that point that it was important to include a little bit of AutoCAD. So rather than try to teach you AutoCAD and make you fluent in AutoCAD, what I'm going to try to concentrate on, obviously we'll have to do some basic drawings in AutoCAD and I'll talk about basic drawings. It's kind of like drafting more than true, you know, real in-depth AutoCAD, but we'll spend some time, how do you make your drawings look good coming out of AutoCAD? And so we'll eventually take our AutoCAD and we'll bring it into Illustrator. We'll do some manipulations in Illustrator uh, to create that final product. So this will take place over the next couple of weeks. And you'll see kind of a, a natural progression of how AutoCAD can end up becoming Illustrator at the end and, and what that fine tuning can be. So for those of you that have uh, you know worked in AutoCAD before, this is a piece of cake. It's a walk in the park. The stuff that I'm talking about today is really basic. But at the same time, if you've never done AutoCAD, don't be afraid. We're going to get some exposure to AutoCAD. You'll get some skills in AutoCAD. And I recognize that everybody comes to the table with something slightly different. So this is my take on AutoCAD and why it's important. Um, I would say that, let me go ahead and share my screen while, while I keep talking here. I would say that AutoCAD is really one of those programs that's just kind of ubiquitous across all of the world of design, um, particularly architecture, but it's kind of hard to get away from. There's just There's a point at which AutoCAD always just comes back to being relevant. And it might be, you know, you're working on a project and then the engineer wants some drawings in AutoCAD. Um, so even if you're working in another program, you may have to do a little bit of manipulation in AutoCAD over time. So it's just, it's kind of one of those things that uh, always is relevant. And so it's kind of the industry standard. It came about a really long time ago. I actually learned AutoCAD uh, before they released AutoCAD 2000. Uh, it was AutoCAD R12 was the release 12 was the version I learned on uh, that was back in the late 90s and it's amazing one how consistent it really is and how it's really kind of the same program and two how much better it is today so it's kind of a weird double-edged sword because AutoCAD has improved a lot back when I first learned it it was pretty much all command line so you had to know key commands to to work with it now it's a little bit more graphic so as we get started here, and I did make a note about this on our exercise for today, exercise 117, is that you will probably be working on the remote desktop, which is what I use to do all the demos in class. Um, I did do a walkthrough of how do you log into the remote desktop early in the semester. If you're missing it, you can go to this. Um, uh, this is my old course website. I have a remote desktop thing that walks you through setting it up. Um, you can also download Autodesk for free from AutoCAD, or excuse me, you can down Auto, download AutoCAD for free from Autodesk, the makers of AutoCAD. Uh, they'll let you have a student version for free. It does put little watermarks on the edge of the page. I will not uh, grade you down for those watermarks, so there's nothing, uh, there's no reason you can't use it. I would also caution you though, just so you know, uh, once the student version of AutoCAD has opened a AutoCAD file, the little watermarks and stuff remain, even if you go back and open it in a real version of AutoCAD. So it's kind of a permanent altercation or alteration to the file. So just be aware of that. But again, for the scope of this class, there's nothing wrong with using it. The other thing that I'll caution you against is that AutoCAD makes a Mac version. And if you're a Mac person, you can use the Mac version. The demos and everything that I'll be teaching from are the Windows versions, and they look a little bit different. So if you're using the Mac version, be prepared that it's going to be different, and it's going to look different than what I'm teaching. Um, you can still do it, 
and it still works, but uh, the demos won't quite be match up exactly. If you use the remote desktop, it'll be exactly what it is that I uh, demo is what you're working on. The other thing that I'll point out, and you can see this on my screen right now, is that when I, there are key commands, there's commands that you type into what's called the command line. We'll talk about that in a second. When I have commands that you type in, I highlight them in this kind of red and there's a little box. So you can see on, on any of the handouts that I give you, those are key commands that you can type in. So I just wanna point that out so that you're aware of my way of communicating that information to you when it comes to AutoCAD. Uh, those of you that are in my Rhino class, you know that I do this for Rhino um, as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this for right now. And then we're gonna open up AutoCAD. Now, I'm starting again from the very basics of this. When we look at the remote desktop at school, uh, there is a folder called Autodesk on the left side here. And when I double click on Autodesk, you'll see that there are several different versions of AutoCAD. Um, we are not going to be working in the architecture version of AutoCAD. That's is kind of tailored specifically to architecture and architectural design. We're gonna use the basic AutoCAD, which is this one right here, AutoCAD 2023. I will go ahead and double click on that to get AutoCAD to load up here. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to get, to get started here. There we go. Um, these kinds of splash screens about privacy settings, you can just click through them and say, okay. And this has now opened up kind of the generic AutoCAD interface. We wanna create a brand new file uh, to work from. We can come over here on the left side and go to this new, and you'll see that we have templates or we could just create a brand new file. We can also create a brand new file up here at the top. There's a little um, piece of paper looking icon in the upper left corner. If we click on that, it's going to create a new blank drawing file. There are templates that automatically come up if you wanted to open up a particular template. We're using the, the very basic AutoCAD. We'll go ahead and say open. And this then opens up our AutoCAD uh, application. So let me talk through AutoCAD in general. So a couple of things. One, you notice that this looks very different than anything that we've worked on in class so far. It looks different than the Adobe programs. Uh, one of the notable differences is that the background is all black and our lines that we're drawing will be in white. AutoCAD did this a long time ago because when people work in AutoCAD, they have a tendency to stare at the screen for very long periods of time. And as a result, they did some studies and they determined that drawing in white lines on a black background is much easier on your eyes when you're looking at it for a long period of time. So AutoCAD has kept that um, for years and years and years. And when we draw, we're going to be drawing on a black background with white lines. That being said, when we go to print the drawing, the white will automatically convert over to black. So everything else is the same. All the colors, all the rest of the colors would be the same, but black and white are reversed in AutoCAD. And so it's just something to get used to. So let's talk a little bit about the interface of AutoCAD as we start to kind of work on it, because it's very, very different than what we've seen before. Uh, first off, we have across the top here, we have these kind of panels or panes that have different sets of tools. The home set, right, gives you a bunch of different tools and they're kind of broadly categorized. We have some drawing tools here. These are again, the most commonly used drawing tools. Then we move over into the most commonly used modification tools. So things like mirror, rotate, trim, et cetera. Then we move over here into annotation. These would be for dimensions. We're not gonna cover that in this class because it's a more advanced topic, but that is your annotation. Then we have what are uh, our layers and layer properties. We'll cover that a little bit more down the road. We have the ability to insert blocks and we'll talk about that down the road. And then right here, we have our properties. These are where we can change color, line type, line weight, et cetera. And then we have a few other like, little random things. We have groups, we have measurements and you know copy paste and that side of, sort of thing. So again, the home ribbon is kind of the most common ribbon that we're going to be seeing. We can flip over into other ribbons and these tend to be more um, involved. So for example, we have the annotation section here in the home ribbon, but we also have an annotate panel, which gives us a lot more information or a lot more tools. 
Again, not something that's particularly relevant for what we're doing. We're going to pretend to just stick with the home set of tools. OK, so then we move down into our general workspace. This black area is what we're going to be drawing in. We do have a north, south, east, west orientation, kind of like a compass over here. We're looking down at the top view. AutoCAD does have the ability to work in three dimensions, though I really caution against it. It's, it's much better as a 2D drawing program than it is as, as a 3D drawing program. So we're going to stick in the two dimensions here. Uh, but that helps with our orientation, and we'll get to a point where we work with that uh, a little bit in terms of manipulation. Then we come down to the bottom, and you see that we have this white bar that comes across the bottom of the page, and it says, type a command. Well, this is that command line that I was talking about. It allows you to type in commands rather than choosing a tool. So for example, if I wanted to draw a line, I can, of course, pick the line tool, or down here in the command line, I could type line, or actually I only have to type L for line because it recognizes that, but I could go ahead and type line followed by enter or return on the keyboard, and I'd initiate the line command. So that command line is something that's very important in AutoCAD. If we're in the middle of a command, it's always a good idea to look at what's happening down here because it, sometimes it'll be prompting you for the next piece of what it needs to finish that work. We move down into the bottom bar here, at the very bottom of the page, you see we have model layout one and layout two. But right now we're working in what's called model space. I will have a whole lecture talking about model space and paper space. We're going to be working in model space. And then over here on the right side, we have a variety of little toggle switches. OK, so first off, we need to confirm that there, because of what I'm going to have you draw, I need you to turn something off. And it's not shown by default in these toggle switches. So you'll come all the way down to the lower right corner where you see those three bars for customization. And then you'll click on those. And then up here, you're going to toggle this dynamic input button. So I click on dynamic input. And when I do that, this tool shows up. By default, it's on. And we will generally use it in this mode. However, for what we'll start drawing today, it's important to be able to turn it off initially. So I'm going to turn that one off just by unhighlighting it. And now that one's turned off. So that's the dynamic input. I do have this written out just so that you don't get too lost right here. Uh, we're going to work on the dynamic input right here. Please also turn off the dynamic input button at the bottom of the AutoCAD workspace. OK. So now, before we can actually draw anything, we do also need to confirm that our units are set correctly. So everything that I'm going to be drawing today, the examples are all in architectural units. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the command line again. And I don't actually have to click in the command line to type. If I just start typing units, it will automatically show up there. And I'll go ahead and type units. And I'll hit Enter. And it'll bring up my drawing units. We want to switch from decimal lengths into architectural lengths. That will let us work in feet and inches. Notice that below that, we have a precision. The precision is set to a 16th of an inch. This should only be as low as you really need to get when it comes to precision. 16th of an inch is plenty. We don't get, need to be down here into 128th or 256th of an inch. We're not drawing anything that small. So a 16th is fine. When I'm all done, I'll go ahead and say OK. And now my drawing has been updated for those units. OK, so to work with our AutoCAD drawing, to zoom in and zoom out, we use the scroll wheel on a mouse to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, we can also, I think, hold the middle mouse button to pan. There we go. I have a tendency to just zoom in and zoom out, but just be aware that you can click on that middle mouse button and pan. So let me start with the polyline tool. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to click on that polyline tool. Alternatively, I could type in the command line P line, and that would get me to the polyline. And so when we start our drawing, we're going to start drawing right at the origins, right where X and Y meet. Now remember, AutoCAD is built just like our other uh, NURBS modeling programs or our other vector-based programs based on math. So AutoCAD works on a coordinate system. We have an X, Y grid that's shown up here, and it's designated by this little X and Y. This point right here where the X and Y meet is point zero, zero. So if you remember back to you know, early algebra or in high school when you were doing 
you know, graphs and coordinate systems, et cetera. That's essentially what we're doing here. And so we want to start right at that origin, right at point zero zero. So I can zoom in and try to get close, but no matter how close I get, when I move the mouse over it and I click to start, when I zoom in, it's still not quite on the point. And we want to be specific about where that is. So rather than zoom in and try to hit that point, I can actually type in a particular value. So if I went here to the polyline tool again, I could start my line at zero comma zero. So that's giving what's called an absolute coordinate. So in the, the giant grid of AutoCAD, I wanna start at point zero zero, I type in zero comma zero, I hit enter or return on the keyboard. And no matter how close I zoom in, that will always be right at zero zero. So I'm really using that to my advantage. So as we continue to draw, right, we want to draw, oops, come on, let me pan. No, it's not gonna let me pan right now. I wanna draw straight up. And I wanna draw straight up by 22 feet, or excuse me, by 20 feet. I, I can't even speak this morning. Um, and so if I were to type in the absolute coordinate of that value, it would be zero in the, remember the X coordinate always is always first. It would be zero in the X direction, comma, 20. And then I need a designation for feet. And so to do that, I'm gonna use the apostrophe. So it's a single line. If I mean inches, I can use the quotation mark to represent inches. So this is an apostrophe and it's representative of feet. So I say zero comma 20 apostrophe for 20 feet. And then I hit enter or return on the keyboard. Now I have a line that is 20 feet long. And that's the other thing that's important to recognize in the world of AutoCAD is everything that we draw is at full scale. So when we start drawing a building, we're drawing it as if it were full size. And then we deal with scaling later on. So the next shape that we're going to draw is we want a horizontal line that comes over here. So as we start to create that horizontal line that comes over here, we again need to type in a new set of coordinates. So this new set is going to be 12 feet over. And again, in the world of math, it's still 20 feet up. So my absolute coordinates here would be 12 feet in the x direction, comma, 20, did I say 20 feet? I think it should have been 24 feet, feet in the uh, y direction. Let me go ahead and hit enter. And that then creates that shape. I'm gonna go back and double check my uh, drawing here. I think I might've messed that up. Yep, should have been 24 feet. This is ultimately what we're drawing down here at the bottom of the page. Uh, so it should have been 24 feet. So this gives me a good opportunity to repeat myself again. Right, so let me go ahead and select those. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete those. I can press delete on the keyboard or I can type erase and it'll go away. I'm gonna come back to that polyline. I'll start again since my measurements were wrong. Let's click on polyline or I could type in P line. I'll start at zero comma zero followed by the enter key. There we go. And now I wanna go up by 24 feet. So it's gonna be zero comma 24 feet. Enter, there it is. Next one is gonna be over by 12 and still up 24. So I would say 12 comma 24 feet. Sorry, I should say 12 feet comma 24 feet. Enter, and that gives me that next point. The problem here is that it starts to get difficult, the coordinates. So the next point would be six feet down and so I'd have to start doing some math. It would be 24 minus six, that would be 18 up. So it would be 12 comma 18 would be my next coordinate. But to me, that starts to get really complicated. You really have to understand where you are in space. So AutoCAD also has the ability to do something that is called a relative coordinate. So rather than an absolute coordinate, which is what we've been talking about, we can do a relative coordinate. And a relative coordinate is just relative to the last piece that you drew. So relative to this last click, so right here, as if that were zero, zero, where do I wanna go? Well, I wanna go negative six in the Y. So I would say relative, and I'll use the at sign, like the email sign to indicate that this is relative. So relative to the last point I clicked, I wanna go zero in the X comma negative six feet in the Y and I'll hit enter. So sometimes relative to that last point, it's much easier to draw. So again, this is at, we're gonna go 12 feet 
in the x direction. So at 12 feet, comma zero is our next coordinate. So this starts to get much, much easier when we're using those relative uh, coordinates. So again, this would be at um, zero comma negative 12 feet. And there it is there. This last point coming back, this would be at negative 12 feet comma zero. And then we could come back and we could flip, for example. And again, these are interchangeable. We can say, oh, this is a relative coordinate at 12 comma zero. So instead of putting the at sign, I could just type in 12 comma zero. Sorry, this should have been 12 feet comma zero. And then I can come back and snap to my end point right here. And when I'm done, I'll press enter. And now I have that shape. So this relative coordinate system does also work if you're not starting at zero, zero. So if I started drawing over here, I could use my relative coordinates, say at zero comma 24 feet, and that creates my first one. And then we could go over, this would be at uh, 12 feet comma zero, at zero comma negative six feet. A lot of great question. Why don't we use double walls? We're, we're going to get, we're going to create the second wall using an offset. And again, I'm pursuing this not as if it's a architectural drawing. I'm pursuing it just as a basic drawing. We happen to be drawing a floor plan, but we're not using any three-dimensional objects and we're not using like the, the wall tool or the double line tool because that's very specific. We're talking about kind of generic uh, drawing systems. Uh, and that's, again, because I'm starting at the basic level and I'm not trying to teach you uh, AutoCAD, <laughs> all of AutoCAD in three weeks. So let me get rid of that line there. So that's great. And it's important to understand the coordinate system. And it's something I want you to understand. At the same time, sometimes it's easier to go ahead and just type in values as you go rather than have to do the coordinates. And that's where this dynamic input button comes into place. So I'm gonna turn that one back on and I'll show you from here, we can still do the same thing that we've been doing, but we have some other options. Notice that when I turn that dynamic input on, my cursor then has some little text boxes next to it. So right now it has nothing. When I click dynamic input and turn it on, now it has two text box next to it, which really helps. So if I were drawing this shape, right, I can still type in my coordinates, so I can still type in uh, zero comma, well, here, let's, let's do it live and get rid of this. Let's do it again. So here it is with the dynamic input on. It says specify start point. I could still type in zero comma zero, and you see that it, it shows up next to my cursor. Okay, And then I could continue on. And notice that now that I have the dynamic input, when I start to draw a line, as I move it, I get a text box that I can actually just type into, right? So I could just type in 24 feet. I don't need to worry about the coordinates anymore. So it's just a direction and a distance. So I'm going in this distance, 12 feet. I'm going down here in six feet. So this is easier when you're starting to draw. And I would encourage you to get to the point where you can do this. However, as part of the exercise, I want you to understand what these coordinates mean and how they're used. All right, so let's go down 12 feet. Let's go over six feet. Oops, sorry, that should have been 12 feet. 12 feet. And we'll go down six feet. And then we'll come back to the end right there. So again, I've created the same shape, but I'm just typing in distances this time, which is a little bit easier. Okay, so now that I have this shape, it's time to create that inner wall. And I'm going to do that using the offset tool. And it's available up here in our toolbar. It is right there. It looks kind of like a double C. Or you could type offset into the command line. So when I click on the offset tool, it says specify offset distance. So it's asking me how much. We're going to do that at six inches. So six quotation mark. And I'll press enter. And now you just have to choose whether you want to be on the inside or the outside of the original line. So I want to be on the inside, and there I am. If, and this is something that happens with some, some students along the way, if this wasn't a continuous line, 
right? So this was all separate little lines. When you did the offset, there's the offset. I'm gonna again specify six inches of my distance. We would get overlapping corners like this. So when I pick these, see those little overlapping corners? And we'd obviously have to clean those up. So it's cleaner if we join or have a completely closed polyline like I originally drew. Go ahead and erase those. I will rejoin these together. Uh, and I can do that by using the join command, or I can just type in join. I'd have to look in here and find the join command because I typically just uh, type it in. Let's go ahead and go to join. And now those are back together. So again, not, not required, but it makes your life a little bit easier when you go to do the offset command. So again, I'll pick the offset tool here. And I'm going to specify my distance as six inches. And I want these to go on the inside of my walls. There it is. So now I have my double lines, which is perfect. So if we go back to the handout here, right? we've created the first shape. Then we've done the offset command at six inches. Now it's time to start working on trim and drawing in the doors and the windows. So we'll come back here. And this is where we want to introduce some concepts. One is snapping um, and the other is tracking. So first off, if I wanted to draw that door, right, I need a reference point. I need to understand where the middle, I'm going to use a line here, where the middle of this shape is. Well, obviously, I know that this is a 12-foot wall. So I could uh, use coordinates to get the middle, but that's really difficult. Instead, I'm going to come down here to this tool right here. There's a little arrow next to what's called the snap tool. And these object snaps allow us to snap to specific places. By default, endpoint, center, intersection, and extension are turned on. I strongly encourage you to turn on midpoint. I'm going to use that just now. And I also really like perpendicular. And why that one's not on by default has never, I've never understood that. So I'm going to turn on perpendicular. In fact, I use perpendicular and midpoint far more than I do intersection or extension. We can leave those on for right now, but perpendicular should be on and midpoint should be on. And you'll see how they're used in just a second. So if I use that line tool again, when I move and hover my mouse over this line, notice I get that triangle that shows up. That is the midpoint. It's the middle of that line. So it's really easy to click at the midpoint there, click at the midpoint here, and I now have a line that is exactly in the center of this wall. So if I go back to my reference drawing right here, you see that I have a three-foot door that falls directly in the center of this wall. Well, I need to cut that three-foot opening. So I can come back here. And I can use my offset command. Once again, there's offset. This time, my distance would be half of three feet, which would be 18 inches. So I'll type 18 quotation mark. I could also type one foot six inches and get the same thing. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And now I'll select my line. And I'll move it once to the right. I'll come back, select the line again and move it once to the left. That gives me this line and this line. I'll hit Enter to finish the command, and there we go. I should also point out that in AutoCAD, if you ever feel stuck, if something's not working correctly for you or whatever, the escape key is your best friend in AutoCAD. You hit Escape a couple times, and you're going to be out of any command, which is a great thing to do. So the next thing we want to explore is the Trim command. And the trim command actually has changed in, in the most recent version of AutoCAD in that we don't have to select objects before we start trimming. If we click the trim command, it assumes that we've selected all our objects. So when I choose the trim command, I can go in and select line segments that I want to get rid of. And you see it kind of previews it with a little X there. So if I were to click on that line segment, click on this line segment there, this one, this one and this one, I can very easily trim out that opening. When I'm done with the trim command, I'll go ahead and press Enter. 
And that then finishes the trim command. So now I have that door cut out. The next thing that I need is the window. And so if I open up here, sorry, wrong button, there we go. I have a two foot window that is one foot six or 18 inches away from the corner. So how do I go about drawing that? Well, the easiest strategy is to again use the line command and rather than draw a line and just snap to this endpoint and go over the one foot six, I can use something called tracking to hover my mouse over this point and then move the mouse to the left. And I can actually type in the value that I want to offset. So right now, one foot six, and that will then be where I start my line. So I'll repeat that process again. I pick the line tool. I hover my mouse over a point. Then I move it to the right. I haven't clicked at all. And you see that it leaves behind. Let me zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. When I hover and then I move my mouse, see it leaves behind that little green plus sign. That's the tracking point. That's the place that I'm tracking from. And now I can say, I want to go perpendicular. I want to go over by one foot. Actually, this was two feet, sorry. Two feet, enter. And that'll start my next line. So that's something to really get comfortable with in AutoCAD because it's a way of starting at a different place. So if I had a matching window on the other side, I could come over here, set this point, move to the left. And again, I haven't clicked at all. One foot, six inches. And I'm just snapping to perpendicular there. Again, I'm going to pick the line. Oops. Start there and move over. This would be two feet. And now I have that line. So getting used to this idea of tracking is a, is a skill that's important in AutoCAD. OK, so now I have the, the window here. Now, in order to really make it look like a window, we're not trimming it out this time, but we do need a line, or ideally two lines, that go across in the middle. So let me go ahead and click on my line here. And we're going to snap midpoint to midpoint to give me that line. And that is now symbolic of a window. And go from there to there. So that is something that we need to do to, to signify the window. Now you'll see in my drawing that I gave you here, if we were to zoom in, let's see if it'll. Let's see if I can. What? Sure. it'll open. I was going to zoom in on it for you. Come on, Photoshop. There we go. Uh, let's do control zero to zoom in. There we go. You can see that I actually have two lines here to represent the thickness of the glass. So that's something that you can choose to do if you want, but this is kind of the basic level. So if I wanted to do those, it's again, just an offset. So I'd come in here to offset. My offset distance, uh, maybe a quarter of an inch, 0.25 inches. And then we do on one side and we do on the other side. And then I come back and select the middle and get rid of it. So I type erase or you can press delete on the keyboard. And that just adds a little bit of dimension to it. So again, I can do the offset. Um, my distance is a quarter of an inch. There it is on one side. There it is on the other side. I'll press enter. And then I'll go ahead and select the one in the middle and I'll erase the one in the middle. Perfect. So now I have those two windows on either side of the door. Now, what if I want those windows to repeat? What if I want this window down here, for example? Well, I can use a command called mirror to do just that. So here's that window. It's also down here. I can come over to mirror. So I could select this object. Now, this is an important distinction, and I should talk through this. 
There are two ways of selecting objects in AutoCAD. If you select from left to right, whatever is completely contained within the selection region will be selected. So in this case, the only thing completely contained is that line from left to right. So I would have to select the whole thing like this to select everything. Notice, however, that when I select from left to right here, it does not select the walls. If, however, I was selecting from right to left, and notice that the color changes. So I have a blue selection or a green selection. If I select from right to left with the green selection, anything that I touch will be selected. So in this case, it's selecting the walls as well. So if I wanted to copy just or mirror just the window, I would select from left to right to select just the window and not the walls. Then I can come up and use the mirror command. So I'll click on mirror. And it's going to ask me specify the first point of the mirror line. Well, what I want to use is the midpoint of this wall here. So I'll click on the midpoint. And then I'll just draw a straight line. And that's going to mirror this object down here. It is asking me, do I want to erase the source objects? No, I do not want to. And that leaves me with this right here. OK, so the, we're, we're making progress here. This time, rather than have this window over here, I have two windows that are close to each other. And they have six inches in between them. So I need to make a copy of this window with a six inch gap. So if I took this window and select again from left to right, and I choose the copy command right here, or I could type copy on the keyboard, it's going to ask me a base point. So that base point could be anywhere. I could copy from right here, but that's hard to line up. Where do I, I don't know where this is gonna go. So what I can do is I can select my objects, I can choose copy, and I can use that tracking that I was talking about. So I can hover my mouse on this corner, move the mouse to the left and say six inches. That's the distance in between these windows. And when I do that, when I come over to this side, I just have to snap to the end of the window. And now I have two windows that are six inches apart. Let me repeat that one more time. So I select my object, there it is. I go up to the copy command. I use my tracking, I hover my mouse over this point. I move the mouse to the left, type six inches. Now I'm copying from six inches away from that point, And I can then snap to that point there. And that gives me those two windows. Could I draw the second window? Absolutely. So there's nothing wrong or there's nothing required that you use the copy um, and paste, but I like to show you that just so you're aware that that exists as a command. Now I also have, if we jump back here, I also have a couple windows on the sides here. Well, I could of course come back here and I could just draw them, right? So it was one foot six, so I can come in here, hover my mouse right there, come up by one foot six, and I could start to draw that window. But I can use the mirror command a little bit creatively to get the same result. So rather than mirroring across a horizontal or a vertical, I'm going to mirror across the corner at 45 degrees. So I'll select my objects. I'll choose mirror again. And I'll use this corner and this corner to create a mirror across 45 degrees. And that converts this over to being on the side wall. No, I don't want to erase the source objects. Let me come back up here. I'll do it again for this top. I'll select it. I'll go to mirror. And I'll choose that corner and that corner right there. Erase source objects, no. And that gives me that window. So some more things that we're adding. Right, looks like we have a wall that separates this room from the big room. And we also have two more doors to add. Now, in some of these, I don't actually have measurements. So in this case, I don't have a measurement for what that is. We'll assume that the door is three feet, just like my other door here. 
likewise, I don't have a measurement for this little bit. So we'll just make those up. So whatever you decide they are is fine with me. So let's go ahead and again, I'm gonna use the line tool and I'll draw that. I'll use the offset tool. I'll set my distance at six inches and we'll create that part. Now I need to do a trim because obviously we don't need that little section there anymore. So I'll come up to the trim command and we'll get rid of that little piece and we'll get rid of that little piece and I'll press enter to finish. I'll come back to my line tool. Let's come down, I don't know, maybe four inches. So again, I set that point and I start tracking so that I can set a line that's four inches down. And then I'll offset this by the three feet because I know that the door was three feet. So let's go ahead and go back to our offset tool. And our distance here would be three apostrophe for three feet. And there it is. Now in this case, I have a door, same door right outside here. So I could take these two lines that represent the door, again, selecting from left to right. And we'll go ahead and type copy. And I will copy from that corner and I'll paste it right down at that corner. Alana, you had a question that said, why isn't it moving to the right? I don't know, but I need more context to understand the question. When you're tracking um, the offset, you, you pulled it to the left. And even though it was going to be six inches to the right. For the windows, yes. Okay, good, good question. What I was trying to do is I, I knew that I had a point here. Let me, let me do it again and talk through it and maybe I can explain it better. And this is exactly why I like these live lectures is because you can ask this kind of a question. So thank you for asking that question. So when I'm moving or I'm copying this window right here, I don't have a point over here to just to click on, to snap to that six inches away but I do have this window that's gonna stay in place. So when I copy it and I go six inches to the left, I'm thinking about the piece that I'm going to end up pasting, not the window that's here. So it's giving me, by going six inches to the left here, when I pick it up, I can then snap to that corner because I know where that corner is. Does that make sense? Nope. <laughs> I know, I know. It's a, it's a really hard one. It's a hard one. And that's where a lot of times people, if they don't understand, they just jump into the, well, I'll just draw it again. It's fine. If I That's what I'm going to planning on doing. I know, I know. But I like to try because for some people it may sink in and they're like, oh, I get it. But this is good. I'm glad you're asking me. I'll try it one more time to explain. So if I were to copy it from here and I come over here, I have no place, like nothing to snap to that's at six inches away. Likewise, if I were to take this piece and I were to copy it, even if it was, you know, if I moved over here six inches, I still have nothing to snap to, right? There's no, there's no, nothing that's designating where this is going to end up going. So by taking this and setting the point that I'm copying from six inches back, when I come over here, see how I have the cursor six inches away from my window? I can then line it up with the old window, and then I know they're six inches apart. Okay, so when you're, what is the command again? It's just copy. When you're copying, hmm? you you are setting your cursor point to the six Exactly, it, they call it a base point. I'm specifying a base point. It's where, okay. I, it's the point that I'm copying from. Oh, okay. And that's why, and I'm doing it six inches away, so that I have something to click on that gives me the spacing that I want. All right, yeah. Thank you. No, it's thank you for asking the question. It was a great question. You hit enter there to finish. Okay, so now I need to trim out these two doors. So again, we'll come back to trim and I can click on these. One thing to point out with trim is I can actually draw a line through both at the same time and trim them both at once. So I don't have to just click on them. I can draw a line through them and do the trim. And like I said, trim has changed in AutoCAD 2023. 
there's a difference in, in 2022 and earlier, you had to select objects to trim. It didn't just automatically trim objects. So I just like to point that out in case somebody's using an older version of AutoCAD, that it is different. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is to draw the doors in place. And I'm going to draw the doors using the rectangle tool, which is right up here in my drawing tools. I'll click on rectangle. I'll pick on the corner that I want to draw the door from. There it is. And now I need to draw the door itself. Well, we know it's three inches or three feet. The thickness of the door is, is, is a matter for technical detail. You can make it whatever you want. Typically, an interior door is an inch and three eighths, an exterior door is an inch and three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead, because this is theoretically an exterior door, I'm going to do it an inch and three quarters. Again, I don't really care. And that's not something I'm expecting you to know. You can just make it up. And that's OK with me. So this is a perfect opportunity to do a relative coordinate. So I can say at, and I'm going to specify the uh, x distance, so the thickness of the door, 1.75, followed by, so comma, the y direction, which would be negative 3 feet, negative 3 apostrophe, enter. And that then draws the door. So I'll repeat that again on one of these doors, just so you can see it again. There it is. This time I'm going to say at relative to that point I just clicked, we're going three feet in the X comma negative 1.75 inches down. And there's my door. Now, if I messed up and I created it the wrong direction, so let's say that, and this happens to me too, I start at this point and I say, you know what? Uh, this is going to be uh, negative three feet comma negative 1.75 inches. Oh, whoops, I did it backwards. Well, that's okay. We can select the object. We can come up to move. And again, this is one where they're asking for a base point. So where do I want to move from? I want to move from that point right there and we'll snap it to that point right there. So if you mess it up, no big deal. We'll just move it and get our door in its correct position. So now I have the three doors. It would be helpful to have the door swings. So we're going to use an arc tool for that. So I'll come over here into arc. There are multiple arc tools. There's the default one, but then if I click the little arrow that, that goes down below it, you can see that I have all kinds of different arc tools. The one that I like for door swings is this start, end, and direction. It's about halfway down. I'll click on that. And all we need to do is specify the start point there, the end point there, and whether it needs to go in or out, or excuse me, in or out. So in this case, it's obviously going in that direction. So I'll just click. Do that again. There's the arc, start, end, and there it is. One more time, arc, start, end, and out like that. So again, just different kinds of options for you. So it looks like if I come back here, we've got a few more windows to draw, All right? They're four foot windows and they're at one foot nine from the corner. So we could just go in and draw those. I'll start with my line here. I'll set this point. I'll move over to the left, one foot nine inches. And we will draw that line right there. Then I can offset by four feet. So we use the offset tool. My distance will be four feet. And there it is. Then I need um, to draw those lines in the middle. So I can do my line middle to middle. Then I can do my offset again, 0.25. Create the double lines. And again, double lines are optional for what you're doing. Take the middle line and we'll erase it. Oh, that's an interesting one for me. You can press the delete key and I've told you that several times on, uh, on doing this. I learned AutoCAD again back when it was all command line. So you had to know the key commands. You couldn't just press the delete key. Um, so I got so ingrained with typing erase that it's never left my brain and that's just what I do. 
So we have this window. We can copy it again. So I'll select it all. Again, a selection from left to right. And then I'll go ahead and I'll copy it. So I'll use the copy command, or I could type copy into the command line. And this is the opposite of what we did um, last time. I'll set my point here, but I'm going to go over by six inches. And then I can set that next window right there. The same two windows appear up here. So this is, again, just a copy. Or I could mirror it. So two options, copy. It's going to ask me to set base point. I could set it right there and come straight up and draw it that way. Alternatively, I could select both windows. I could use the mirror command and do it from the middle of this wall to create the second set. Either way, works just fine. So I have that set of windows. So at this point, this is the bulk of what I need uh, done for today. Again, some of you are going to rip through this. It'll be really quick. If you want to embellish this floor plan and change something, by all means, go for it. If you're happy with this and it took you the time to do it, that's great too. This is a tough one because there's a very broad diversity of skills in AutoCAD in this class. There always is. And so some of you will breeze through it. Others of you won't. I do promise that there are some things that I can teach you about AutoCAD that even if you feel like you're an expert in AutoCAD, you'll still probably learn a few things. So we will get there. However, the first couple of days is a lot of basic drawing. And I am approaching this as if it's just drafting, where we're drawing individual lines. Yes, there are tools that draw double lines. Yes, there are symbols that represent doors. There's lots of things built into AutoCAD that make you faster, but this is about just drawing. And so the things that we're going to be creating are really based on just drawing. Okay? So once you get to this stage, or maybe it's a little bit more embellished, we have to talk about how do we get this out of AutoCAD. So first off, we want to save our file. Um, I'll come up to the little disk icon in the upper left corner and choose the save icon. I want to make sure that it's showing up on my um, OneDrive. So let me put it into today's folders. That is not the correct class. And we're right here in 117. Let me create a folder for the fall of 2022. And this is 117. And I'll go ahead and click on save. That saves the AutoCAD file for me, which is good. Now we have to create a JPEG. And so what I found the easiest way of doing it is to go ahead and click the printer icon. And under the printer plotter name, instead of none, we're going to choose the publish to web JPEG. We can use this default paper size. That's just fine. And our plot scale is going to be just fit to paper. So we're not worrying about scale on this at all. And under our plot area, as long as we're seeing our object on the screen, display will work fine. You can choose to plot a window. And when you do that, you're actually specifying just print this section of the drawing. So I could come in here and say, just print that. And it'll show up with just that. Alternatively, choosing just the uh, display is perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And when I do this, it's going to ask me where to save the JPEG. So again, this would go on my flash drive into today's folder. There it is. And we can go ahead and save it. And that then writes the JPEG. So if I went to that folder on my flash drive, And there's the 117. This is the JPEG. If I open it, there it is. Now, it doesn't have all the line weights and stuff. You see that this one has line weights and embellishments and stuff. We're going to get to that kind of style stuff later on. We're just talking about basic drawing. So once you have this basic drawing, that's what you need to turn in for your exercise 117. No dimensions necessary. We're just looking for something that looks along these lines. So don't feel like it has to match up with this perfectly. Okay, no dimensions, no extra line weights, et cetera. We're just looking for something like this. If you want to embellish it, you want to add a kitchen, you want to add anything else, you can, though it's not part of the requirements for this particular exercise. Okay, so I know I got you guys done a little bit early today, but I think 
for some students, it's going to take them a little bit longer to finish this. Other ones will will breeze through this rather quickly. So let's take a 10 minute break or so. We'll come back at 910 for our check ins for this week. I know I got a lot of email questions over um, the weekend with people that were having trouble with Illustrator or whatever. Um, that's what I'm here for. That's what we'll do during check ins um, for anybody that wants to, to come and check in today. Uh, we'll do that. All right.